You're looking at the real deal now. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number eight of the Lowdown Show on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week. Also during the show, we have our segment called The List of Ten and WWE Headlines, where we talk about any important news related in the WWE. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcast live right here on Spreaker, available at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. And after it is done, it is posted on Spreaker itself. So you can also get the Spreaker app, available for all Android and Apple devices. It's also posted on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash NHBWR, and also iTunes and Stitcher Radio by searching The Lowdown Show. So go check us out, wherever it's easier and convenient for you to listen to us. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Bar WP and join in the conversation for The Lowdown Show and having your thoughts and questions read right here on the air. We are also available on Facebook and Instagram by searching No Holds Barred WP. All links will be in the description below on YouTube for you. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. Every week on The Lowdown Show, I am continue to be joined by my co-host. He is the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Happy. Wow, what an intro. Yeah, how does not, as, do? not as blissful as the weather out there today. Oh my god, weather sucks today here in uh, sort of beautiful Niagara Falls, it Ontario, Canada. Rained the Niagara Falls today. Yeah. Um, Glorious Greg, hey guys, just wanted to say what's up and have a good show because Glorious Greg has corporate things to do today. Always a pleasure, gents. Okay. Thanks, Thank you, Greg. Glory Greg. <laughs> Tyler Jones chimes in. Of course he does. <laughs> Trying to get wow. that Twitter, that uh, the Twitter war going. Uh,. <laughs> he says, getting scared, Gregory, with a winking face. Oh, man. Oh, I love it. Anyways, uh, yeah, shitty day today. Looks like uh, your softball game might be canceled. Meh, whatever, it's all right. And uh, I play hockey indoors, so I don't have to worry yeah, about that. Yeah, must be nice. Uh, anyways, uh, a little late to the show today. I think we're like a half hour late because uh, we had our uh, local sports store called Sport Check up here in Canada. Closing uh, down. Basically like a dick sporting goods for all you Americans out there. Um, it's closing down in our city for no apparent reason. They're not even moving to a new location. They're closing down for good. So they're having a store-wide closing sale. Everything's 30% off. And uh, it sucks because now we have to get the next sports check we have is a city over. Yep. We don't yeah. even have an electronics store either. Yeah. They don't even have, we don't even have an electronics store. We have to go all the way to the city over. It's such an inconvenience. Like, what are the hell are they doing here in Niagara Falls, man? Dillinger, man, come back, man. Get us, Give us, give us some help here. We need it. I'm sure your word will go good, you know. Yeah. They need a perfect 10 store. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, Sports Check sucks. So we went and got some stuff from there. Got a couple uh, items that were on clearance. The whole store is on clearance. Place is a mess, man. No, have you ever been to a store and it's like a store closing sale? Place is a disaster. Stuff isn't on with the right rack. Stuff yep. isn't. Pro- it's just shit's everywhere, yeah. man. Oh, it's crazy. Like, they're not closing down every sport check, just the one. Yeah, in just Falls. the one in Niagara Falls. Sucks. Because that's where we live. It sucks. My buddy Mark says sport check is an upscale models for Americans. So oh. Whatever models is. Yeah, I've never heard of models, but that's it. For all y'all, Amer- all y'all Americans out there. Y'all. Y'all. Anyways, welcome to the Lowdown Show, ladies and gentlemen. Right here on Old Bar Wrestling Podcast. Two ways to support the podcast, if you want to. We have a Patreon page, so if you don't know what Patreon is... It's a monthly subscription to us, as little as a dollar a month. Everything goes to support the podcast. Everything gets put into the podcast, and you can receive some great, some great stuff for uh, your donations. I have the list of donations on the Patreon page. So go check us out, and you can read about our story, too. Uh, our whole story is up on there for you all. And if you want to support the podcast and getting to WrestleMania next year, we have a GoFundMe page. GoFundMe. Uh, basically, everything is going to go towards into us driving. We are driving from Niagara Falls all the way to New Orleans. It's a long trip, ladies and gentlemen. Very long trip. If you haven't, if you don't know, go Google the miles for you Americans out there and, and for you Canadians, the kilometers. It's a big, big trip. So everything's going to go and be put into that. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, Greg says it's <laughs> Tyler Jones hasn't heard of that place either. He says this American sport check. So I don't know. Maybe it's just a, a thing where Mark is. Anyways, uh, Greg says, no, it's my cousin's birthday. I'm taking her out to celebrate. You should worry about Juggy before you come at me. Ooh. 
The hey. Twitter beef in our chat, guys. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're just listening to this, you want to get in on the chat, just sign up on Spreaker. You don't have to do anything big. Just sign up with an email, and you can get in on the chat on our live shows. And uh, give us a follow if you ever do. So, yeah. Got the plugs out of the way. Let's get into the review. And, uh, wow. Uh, I missed SmackDown because I was working on my corporate, yeah, corporate working on my birthday. How retarded is that? Unbelievable. Yeah, so half. pissed. Yeah, I got time and a half, but anyways, I got to miss SmackDown. Didn't look like SmackDown was anything great, according to you. No. Raw was decent. I mean, it was, last week I said it was a good show. This week was a good show, but it wasn't better than last week. I'd say it was breaking even or maybe even a little bit less good, but it was better than SmackDown. Shocking enough that Raw has been beating SmackDown a lot lately. And it, it's the shakeup, man. I knew, we had this feeling that the shakeup was going to come and it was going to ruin SmackDown. So far, it's, SmackDown has the talent to be good. They just don't do anything with it. I'm not sure what, what what's going on. I know that everyone can backfire at me for that and say, Oh, well, look, they gave the title to Jinder Mahal, man. That's a land of opportunity moment right there. Yeah, but then what else are they doing with everyone else? They just keep doing the same rinse and repeat crap week after week. So, like, until we hit the pay-per-view, and that's when they show us something different. Yeah, but the same five guys are in the Money in the Bank match. And then expected. they complain about viewership ratings. How do you get people to stay on and view the, the, the product when you, when you feed us the same shit every week? And you don't sell out arenas for SmackDown and Raw. You got, you're, you're blanking out the, the hard camera side because Not you can't sell enough yeah. tickets. It's I mean, crazy. gender, I'm sure, sparked ratings in India. Sure. Apparently, he's being billed as a face in India, but a heel on North America TV. What? How does that make sense? Makes sense because he's catering to that audience only. That's so bad. That is terrible. That's such a stupid idea. In my opinion, I don't like it. Anyways, uh, we'll get into the tweets. Yeah, tweets. We always do tweets first. And uh, we'll start off with our Twitter fan of the month for the month of April, and that is Casey Salvis. Salvis94, I think, on Twitter. At Casey Salvis94 on Twitter. He puts in his tweets, because he wants Twitter Fan of the Month. Guys, you want to win Twitter Fan of the Month? Interact with us on Twitter, and we choose at random the Twitter Fan of the Month. We'll announce the Fan of the Month for May next week on the show, so stay tuned for that. But Casey Salvis won for month April, so he gets his tweets read first, and a shout-out, so shout-out to you, Casey Salvis. He puts... uh, Where is it? Right here. Uh... Oh, my God. It, it sucks when everyone tweets at the same time. <laughs> Twitter doesn't know how to put it together. Here we go. Raw was boring. Fell asleep through most of it. Reigns booed, <laughs> Reigns booed out of the building again in a small city like Grand Rapids. <laughs> Gets booed everywhere. <laughs> um, he puts, uh, this is me watching Raw. It's a gif of a lion falling asleep. <laughs> uh, Casey, your tweets are hilarious. Um... He puts, uh, he would probably be booed on Mars, too. <laughs> cruiserweight division must go absolutely garbage. Hey, I don't think there's anything wrong with the cruiserweight division. They just don't know how to use them. Nothing interesting ever happens. Hope Balor faces Lesnar. Would be a hell of a match. 3.5 out of 10 for Raw, he gave. Mm-hmm. SmackDown was awesome this week. <laughs> okay. He loved the main event. Great to see Styles and Doc Moore teaming up. Can't wait for the Money in the Bank ladder match. Hope to see them win titles soon. 9 out of 10. Great show. Wow. Wow. He gets smacked down a 9 out of 10. Insane. Uh, also, do you guys think that WWE should get rid of 205 Live because it's been absolutely awful? I don't think they should get rid of it. They should just put it on a different sh- different time slot. I think they should have it at full sale. And it should be on its own time slot, like Wednesday nights. After NXT. After NXT. Or even before if you have to for one hour or 45 minutes. It should be on the same night as NXT. Because I think people just go to bed after SmackDown. Yeah, people don't tune into NXT as much. I think if you put both shows on the same night as NXT, people will tune in more to NXT and 205 Live. They'll be like, okay, uh, it's only two might as well watch it. Yeah, they're one one both on the NXT, network. One hour of Cruiserweight. You'll get more network subscriptions, right? And you'll be like, okay, I might as well watch NXT before 205 Live. There you go. I think it just makes sense more. And I think the, the 205 Live crowd would appreciate the Cruiserweights a lot better. So, yeah, that's our opinion, sale. Casey. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Great to see Mahal as a champion. Anything better than Randy Orton. Most boring champion in history. Also, Brazongo is outstanding. Yes, they are. Just don't you get used properly. It sucks. Um, that's it for tweets for Casey Salvis. Thank you, Twitter fan of the month. Casey Salvis. 
Next week comes from Mason Dunbar at Mason Storm at WPC. He's got a wrestling podcast. Go check him out. Both shows were okay. Very crazy all around. I'd give Raw a 4 out of 10 and SmackDown Live a 3 out of 10. My favorite part of either show was the main event of SmackDown Live. It was a good main event. I'll give him that. Good. Interesting. Thank you for your tweets, Mason Dunbar. Next week, Colin, I gave him a new one. Backlash sucked. Raw A. Eh. SmackDown Ugh. <laughs> Simple and sweet rating. Short and sweet by Colin. <laughs> Love him. Thank you, Colin, as always. Glorious Greg puts Raw was meh. I'll give it a 4 out of 10, but I wish TNA would already give there to be the rights to the broken gimmick. Don't we all? And he put the yeah, wonderful gif. Uh, SmackDown was solid. I'll give it a 5 out of 10. Sucks that there was no perfect 10, but the main event was awesome. Exactly. I'm actually ashamed there was no main or perfect 10 either. Ty Dillinger. Sucks. Uh, Brazongo deserves another shot at the tag titles, and the fashion file segments are funny, and he's got the gif of the ones in day one-ish. Or day one is H. Day one is H. What does that even mean? <laughs> oh, God. Lastly, I just want to say... <laughs> And he's got the gif of Braun Strowman. <laughs> uh, Tyler Jones, hey, Casey, how'd that Subban trade work out? <laughs> yeah, Casey uh, doesn't like it either. Yeah, He hates Mark Bergevin, though. Anyways. Yeah, uh, Yeah. so thank you for the roar. He's the one that's continuing to roar. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Glorious Greg. Uh, next tweet comes from Tyler Jones. At Tyler Jones 22 on Twitter. Bray continues to be Raw's bright spot. I need more Heyman. Tag team division is just awful. Why is Sasha getting buried? Four out of ten. I think there is a reason for the burial of Sasha, which we'll get into in the in the review. Um, no Rusev again. What the hell is going on with this crap? Also, don't understand what they're doing with Kevin Owens. Yeah, I thought they would have an, uh, a U.S. title match. I'm not sure why they're including him in the Money in the Bank. I don't think that was a smart idea. We'll get into that in the review too. Uh, tag division is okay. Women's division is god awful right now. Five out of ten. Hashtag Preds for Cup. <laughs> yeah, congrats to the Nashville Predators for making yep. it to the finals. Nemp is, uh, Ty's got a lot to look forward to there. Good for him, as he should. Um, next set of tweets comes from the Twitter fan of the year for 2016. That's right. It goes to Michael Chow at Michael Chow TV on Twitter. He won our 2016 Fan of the Year on Twitter, guys. And if you want to win that, you get your own theme song before your tweets every single show of the year. So, Michael Chow, thank you for being our Twitter Fan of the Month and your continued support of the podcast. So you get your tweets read first here. Or not first, but with the theme song. So, Michael Chow puts, improved shows this week, but nothing, uh, but not saying, or that's not saying that much. Raw, 5 out of 10. The first loss for Apollo as a member of the Titus brand. All is lost. I agree. <laughs> Speaking of which, Kalisto has defeated Strowman and Apollo. What is the need to push? <laughs> what is the need to push this guy? This is Del Rio U.S. title all over again. <laughs> oh, that's not remind me of that. Uh, question: Thoughts on the revival sighting? Do you think it was done on purpose or just a simple mistake of the revival accidentally walking by? I don't think it was an accidental walk by because Dash had his hand taped up. Like, as if he, you know, they just did something. They both had the revival jackets. I don't think they would both be in, like, attire if it was just a, you know, a mistake. I think it was something that you had to catch to kind of get it. Yeah, and I think they're going to play back to that once we find out wh- what's going on. And my guess is that he, they attacked Enzo Amore. That's just my opinion. I think so. it was like one of those things where they gave you a little Easter egg and you kind of had to yeah, figure it out look. Yeah, Michael Chai, you should know about the Easter eggs. Mr. Hollywood boy over there. SmackDown Live, 5 out of 10. Do wrestlers not qualify anymore? There would have been a way for them to extend this until the four-week, or I guess it's three-week now, Money in the Bank pay-per-view. Don't worry, I got to rant about that later. Yeah. Uh, question. Thoughts on the Money in the Bank picks? Why not have an eight-person Money in the Bank? The numbers are always random. Corbin took out Sammy. Could Ty be a replacement? I can picture them having a battle royal for Sammy's spot, which Dillinger will win. Then Sammy's return later, and they make it a seven-person Money in the Bank. They all, it, some years it's, it's been eight, some years yeah. it's been ten, some years it's been six. Yeah, I don't know. If you add more guys, it just kind of gets too f- too crowded. Yeah, I think I think six is a good. And number. You're gonna have to extend the match time to add more spots, and then I maybe... think six is a good number. Yeah, eight, mm, yeah. ten's way too much. Yeah, 
And uh, Mike Shelby puts in, I can't believe I'm actually saying this because I've been talking a lot of smack about it, but I actually enjoyed the fashion files this time. <laughs> I don't know how you haven't been getting behind it, man. It's been great. It's been great. It's actually been entertaining television. Oh, and lastly, birthday wishes to the original master of the master law, Kyle Masters. <laughs> and he has a gif of Chris Masters. Oh, oh Remember when you God. make the tag team on 2K? Yeah. I, I, Michael Chow, I don't know if you've heard me say this before, but every time I used to play 2K, I used to make my guy – Kyle Masters, and I used to always download Chris Masters and make a tag team called the Masters Degree. <laughs> it was great. The, the worst jobbing tag team. Oh, it was time. awesome. Now we were jobbing. We were a good team. <laughs> Shout out to Chris Masters. But those are our tweets, ladies and gentlemen, for today. Thank you, as always, for those tweets. So, just to get into it, the Raw Review from the Van Andel Arena in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Some random place for Raw crazy and in michigan out of all places you go to grand rapids for a raw maybe for a live event why don't you go to detroit and have it at the joe lewis arena or the, the you know doe. the doe or the new arena right how the hell they go to van andel arena i don't know maybe they, they thought all the casuals in grand rapids would cheer for and it was arena. casual central grand rapids has been added to the list okay oh, yeah. it was bad this week um and this is why the opening segment with bray wyatt he got he got some booze it's, that's when you know when it's casual central. When it's booing for Bray Wyatt. Who the hell boos Bray Wyatt in a regular city? Nobody. Anyways, there he, he's uh, he's talking uh, about the taking down the beast. Okay, Ty Jones says Grand Rapids is a big city, just shit people. I mean, when I say big city, uh, Ty Jones, I mean like, you know, a main, if they go to a state like Michigan for Raw, why don't they just go to Detroit? Yeah. Detroit would be like an obvious place. Right, Detroit went was hype when um, Shane O'Mac came back. Yeah, that Raw that was really that good. was a good crowd. That's why I don't understand why I didn't go back there. Anyways, I guess they're just trying to move Raw around, right? Um, Bray Wyatt uh, talking about taking down the Beast. Rowan Reigns ends up coming out to the obvious boos when you got the fangirl screamings that are just fucking loud, and, and you're gonna get them a- everywhere he goes. Um, Rowan Reigns says uh, his usual trash about being his yard. And then uh, it causes Kurt Angle to come out and it says that the Fatal 5-Way will be the biggest match of the new era. I highly doubt that, but okay. <laughs> I love when they try to hype this stuff as first time ever. First yeah, what? first time oh. ever Fatal 5-Way Extreme Rules. Sure, but why do you got to keep hyping as the first time ever? No one gives a crap it's the first time ever, right? That doesn't add anything to the match. It does nothing for me. If it does something for you out there, okay, I'm sorry that I just trashed that, but I'm just saying. I don't know. And it's not even like... It- What's so historic about this right? match? Anyways, uh, he books Bray Wyatt versus Roman Reigns right now. Oh, it's true. It's the burial of Bray Wyatt. <laughs> Except it didn't really end up that way. We had uh, an interesting outcome. So Bray versus Roman Reigns opened the show. Uh, decent match. Uh, Samoa Joe interrupts it at the end, tries to get Wyatt to help double team, but Wyatt does nothing... Like it. He locks in the Coquina Clutch on Roman, causing the disqualification. Wyatt tries to attack Reigns as well, but Joe attacks him. Out comes Seth Rollins for the save. Reigns and Rollins are left staring at each other uh, as the Extreme Rules theme song just starts playing out of nowhere. Yeah. Heaven forbid People you play looking someone. Around like, what's, what's going out? on? Is someone coming out here? <laughs> and they're like, oh, wait, that's the Extreme Rules theme song. Okay. <laughs> sure. Um, backstage. Uh, Rollins and Reigns are arguing with each other. Angle gets in the middle of it and tells him to stop. Books the main event of Rollins and Reigns versus Joe and Wyatt. So a tag team match to end the show. Sick. Uh, the Drifter starts to walk by playing his guitar. <laughs> Angle acknowledges him and says, I've been noticing you a lot. Drifter, you've been trying to get noticed and I've been noticing you. So he books him in a match versus Dean Ambrose. Man, I just love if the drifter just kept drifting by and didn't say a word to anybody, and they didn't like people just got went like oh, okay, like and then just never wrestled, just drifted his way along, and maybe like they build him up like that, and he, he finally has a match. I don't know. I think this is too soon to have him in a match. I think they need they could have done better and like you know improved him a lot, and it, it just <laughs> Some uh, promos backstage. Yeah, made him just keep make him just keep drifting. I love the drifter. Everyone, wa- you know what? I, I I said this a long time ago. They should have paired him and Aiden English up. They could have been. They could have got the most heat out of any tag team <laughs> with between Aiden English just singing and Elias Sampson just playing the guitar. Yeah, that would have been great. Yeah. Um. So move on. We got Akira Tozawa versus Araya Davari. Davari Davari's entrance gets jobbed. 
No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, I missed that. I love his no, entrance no, no, theme. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, throughout the entire match, this is so weird. I don't know what the... I was so cringing at this. They kept playing backstage where Brian Kendrick... Oh, my... Brian Kendrick was talking to the commentators. So the commentators <laughs> were asking him questions during a match. And they just... They went to the screen, the full screen of him backstage. What the fuck is it? They've, I've never seen them do that before. I've never seen commentators be able to talk to the guy in the back room watching the match. <laughs> that, that completely ruined any real... I didn't give a shit about the match in that. I'm just like, what the hell am I watching right now? Why do they keep talking to Brian Kendrick? Talk to him after or Why something. Why wasn't he on actual commentary? Why not have like a Michael Cole interview or something? I've never seen the commentators talk to somebody backstage while Yeah, that was a first. That's the first time ever right there. Wow. Anyways, that wasn't a good yeah, first time ever no. either. Tazawa wins... Ha. From a good match, from what we could see, <laughs> uh, Kendricks cuts a promo after, and it talks about their street fight that they're gonna have this week on Two Hundred Five Live. Cool. I actually have to go back and watch that. I forgot to watch Two Hundred Five Live this week. Shame on me. Uh, backstage segment with Sasha Banks talks about her a rubber match with Alicia Fox. <laughs> oh my lord! They mentioned uh, the one part, the one match, and the, the shoulders being up. Uh, Alicia Fox and Noam Dar show up. They make fun of uh, Sasha being alone, and she has no one. <laughs> I can see where this is going. I guarantee you. I think the rumor. I actually read reports that it's. You know, we'll get actually. We'll get into the news part. That's actually yeah. part of the news. Um, but anyways, and then the big thing out of all this was uh, what happened in the background, and it went all over Twitter. I noticed it. I tweeted about it. Um, the revival was shown sneaky or walking through in the background. Uh, at one point during this backstage interview, and again they were dressed up in their attires. Dash, his hand was taped up, so I think we think it's an Easter egg, and we had to have ca- caught it. So, and I think they're gonna play back to it if something does ha- come out of it. So, anyways, uh, Lyle Sampson versus Dean Ambrose, <laughs> decent match. It was actually a good showing for Sampson. Yeah. Sampson actually looked pretty good. He he was just he was already in the ring when they came back. He was playing yeah. his guitar in the ring, he was doing his singing, getting like natural heat. Like he was he's good. He's a good heel, and his in ring performance is really good too. He looks good, man. I think they could do a lot with Elias Sampson. Better what he did in NXT. Yeah. Um, that's surprising. Usually people that come from NXT do good work in NXT and come up and do crap. And this is a complete reversal, almost seems like. Um, the Miz was on cam- commentary. I didn't even notice until like. <laughs> I'm at five minutes in, I'm like, oh, great. So I, I, you know, I hate when wrestlers are on commentary. So this did nothing for me. It pissed me off. Um, of course, the Miz did get involved in the match, but instead of uh, going after Ambrose, he decked Samson to cause the DQ to have Samson win the match against Ambrose. And he waited for Ambrose to turn around and look up, and then he just gave him like a sick smile and <laughs> say, "Yeah, I just made you lose the match." Uh, Ambrose starts to chase the Miz, and then a- Samson lays out Ambrose with like this neck breaker. I think it's his finishing move. I don't know. We'll see what happens when he actually does win a match with a finisher. Um, so but yeah, smart booking for Miz and Ambrose. Feud. Yeah, uh, this is. Uh, I don't think they have a match yet booked. That uh, is there. I, yeah, the ice title match is booked at Extreme Rules, and if uh, Ambrose gets DQ'd, Miz wins the title. So, uh, in a in a way, I wish it was just straight up Extreme Rules. I I know there's the the whole booking of uh, Ambrose getting disqualified and it actually makes sense into their storyline but uh, I, I don't know it just does nothing for me I'm not really a fan it's just we've seen this feud yeah. on Smackdown already and now yeah. they bring it over to Raw and she's like meh yeah. we'll see what happens we'll see uh, I see Miz winning the IC title though I think it's going to happen I think it's there's going to be like a help of Maurice or something, and Ambrose is going to get disqualified. I think that's how it happens. Ambrose gets disqualified, he loses the title that way, and they're obviously going to have their their rubber match probably at Great Balls of Fire. So. <laughs> Every time I hear that, yeah, yeah. I, I I'm just let everyone know I, that's the first time Great Balls of Fire has been mentioned this week, <laughs> and it's through our podcast. <laughs> they won't they, even mention they it. They won't even mention it on Raw. It's on like TV. Vince doesn't want them to say it because they're still thinking about renaming it. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Um, backstage we have backstage. Uh, Big Cass is, is backstage and he's very upset. And he's walking with a referee. I, I asked me just what happened. What happened? They woke up and they see Enzo Mori. He was just laid out there. Cass calls for some help. Tries to wake up Enzo. Later on, Enzo does eventually start waking up and he doesn't remember what happened. He just remembers to Kurt Angle asking them questions, waking up to that. And then Big Cass tells Kurt Angle, "You better find out who did this, or I will." And I, got, and I just saw the flood of tweets saying, oh, it's actually Big Cat. Big Cast did not attack Enzo Mori. They're not splitting them up. They just split up a tag team. Yeah, It's not going to happen, guys. Relax, okay? Pump the brakes. I'm sure the Revival were backstage in Sasha's segment for a reason. I'm sure they didn't want to... <laughs> in their full gear. Yeah, in their full gear. 
If they didn't hear them having an interview while they're that close, and they they would have stopped themselves. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have walked through. It, it was it is done on purpose. And I'm pretty sure they would have been in like you know regular WWE jumpsuit. They yeah, wouldn't be in their full yeah. ring. Just everyone pump the brakes and the whole big cast and Enzo breaking up. It's not going to happen. Not right now. No. Not right now, at least. Now, uh, move on to Finn Balor versus Carl Anderson. Uh, Balor cutting a pretty good promo before about uh, winning the fail five with Magic going on to beat Brock Lesnar. And all of a sudden, ladies and gentlemen, I'm like, what? Wow. Paul Heyman. This actually shocked me. This is actually a good shocker for Monday Night Raw. And he cuts a promo on Finn Balor and basically wants him to be a Paul Heyman guy. That's what shocked me, too. I'm like, oh, my God. Usually Paul Heyman is just against anybody that says they want to go against Brock Lesnar. But Paul Heyman, like, runs down, like, all of Balor's accomplishments yeah, and appreciates he's the, he's him. The most, uh, or he has the most talent on the roster. Yeah, and wants him to be a Paul Heyman guy. And basically, Balor declines, obviously. And out comes the club. And it ends up being a really good match between uh, Finn Balor and Carl Anderson. Uh, at one point... There's an outside dive to both uh, Anderson and Gallows. Uh, he rolls Anderson back into the ring. Coup de gras for the win. Finn Balor wins against his uh, former Bullet Club friend, Carl Anderson. Hmm. I think eventually I would love to see a club reunion with Finn Balor. I think that'd be really, really cool. Especially like just with his attire would look on. Can you imagine them coming out in their good brother's attire and then Finn Balor, the middle guy with his popped collar? It just suits that so well. The club just needs they need a leader right, right? now. And that's Finn Balor, right? So if Finn Balor doesn't win Extreme Rules, I'd go for that direction. But obviously, they want to go with the Bray Wyatt thing. So I don't see a club reunion anytime soon, as much as it does suck that they're on the same brand. They're just not together, and they're facing each other. So whatever. WWE booking right there. Yeah. Uh, Alicia Fox versus Sasha Banks. Oh, my God. Quick match. Very quick. Quick. Sasha Banks wins with her double knees in the double corner. I guess that's her, her finisher, finisher, right? And then so with Alexa on SmackDown. She wins. She won with like a DDT. I don't know. I thought her her finisher was a tw- uh, was it the bl- the bank statement? No, uh, Alexa Bliss finish. Twist of Bliss or what's Twisted it called? Bliss. Twisted now she Bliss. She just uses the the, the snap yeah. DDT. It's like uh, okay. so Sasha wins with the double knees. That's Thank a, God she won this week. Yeah. After the match, Dar tries to get in Sasha's face. Sasha drops him, and then Alicia Fox attacks her and gives her the scissors kick to end the segment. It's going to lead to mixed what tag. I'm going to get into the news, a mixed tag, and I guarantee you it's going to be Cedric Alexander because she's going to go get someone that despises both of them, and, you know, he's got it at Cedric Alexander. I, I doubt it's going to be, be like match. Jack Alher Shockingly. or anybody. As much as I don't want to see this feud, I think a good mixed tag match. Yeah. But Cedric, Cedric Alexander and Noam Dar. Noam Dar, annoying aside, he's a good wrestler. Alicia Fox has been improving lately. I know it's against your girl, but her in-ring work is pretty good. I know she's cringe, cringe out on the, uh, on the mic, but her in-ring stuff's good. So it would be a good, pretty good mixed tag. Um, it sucks for your girls who's not in the title picture, but bigger things after yeah. that. Hopefully, it's just like a, a spot yeah. or a filler spot. Yeah. We'll have to. Wait. I think by SummerSlam, it's going to be Sasha, Alexa, and Bailey, hundred percent. Oh, Christ. Um, <laughs> backstage, Kalisto and Apollo Crew. There's some sort of this cringe promo segment. going on, oh man. Oh, my God. It's stupid. And Titus comes in, obviously, to hype up the Titus brand. And ask Kalisto to join the Titus brand. Okay. Kalisto obviously declines. And I guess guest superstar GM Titus O'Neil books a match between these guys, between Apollo Crews and Kalisto. Didn't know you were the guest GM, Titus. Didn't know you were booking matches around here. I'm sorry. And then we get Kalisto versus Apollo Crews tonight. And it was an okay match. It's all right. Kalisto won. Yeah, Kalisto won, though, because Titus O'Neil distracted. Tried to distract Kalisto, and it backfired. It ended up distracting Apollo Crews to get Selena Del sold. Unfucking believable I'll, man. Titus brand equals bankruptcy, apparently. You join Just don't face Kalisto, man. Kalisto and Sin Cara are the, the stepping stones for each of the brands on SmackDown oh, and Raw. No. So, you know, at least he put up a good showing as Kalisto. Apollo Crews joins the Titus brand and loses to Kalisto. Yeah, you know Kalisto's a stepping stone. He beat Braun Strowman, now he beat Apollo Crews. That's a stepping stone right there, guaranteed. Yeah, I can't even call that a win. <laughs> but uh, we'll move on to something really awesome, and I'm excited it's back. He'll go less promo. Uh, really, really well done. Really well done. Um, I can't wait for the future of uh, Goldust as a heel. And yeah, it looks he like, back, yeah, he it looks like they're brought, yeah, they're vintage two thousand Goldust. Yeah, it looks like they're going back to that route. And whether or not they get like a girl like, uh, what's her name? What was the girl? Terry, was Terry Runnels to go with Goldust? I don't know. I, think- I, 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 I feel it might be the Terry Runnels thing completed the package with Goldust. So I really hope they have somebody, maybe Dana Brooke, because she hasn't been seen anywhere. Maybe they're they're grooming her into being this 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 person for. Her. 
I wouldn't Maybe. mind that. I mean, I... we always said that Dana Brooke would be a better manager anyway, so I think a good manager for Goldust would be sick. You know what? Maybe Goldust said like before he retires, he wants like one last run as like his old character. Yeah, because he's already like forty eight. Yeah, so maybe maybe WWE granted his wish that like he really wanted to yeah <laughs> have one more run at it yeah so move on Matt Hardy versus Shea Moose uh, winner of the match gets to choose their stipulation for their tag team title match at Extreme Rules good match actually good match uh, still getting uh, the bo- borderline personality disorder by Matt Hardy TNA just needs to get over it and give him the gimmick already man it's, it's 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 so sorry so weird. See him every week doing a yes, version one, delete thing every goddamn week, man. <laughs> oh, my God. And you want to talk about how WWE and Kevin Dunn over there with their editing. With the- oh, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> back there. Uh, the first, you know how they graphic. show the, the promo graphic before the match happens. At first, we had the, the yeah smile by Matt Hardy. The next graphic we got like 10 minutes later didn't have the smile. He, they, they like badly photoshopped him just doing a normal face. Just that mm. <laughs> nah, thanks. Fucking Bugs Bunny back there. What was the point of that? <laughs> you didn't need to fix their faces. Why? Why did you need to fix Just them leave yet? it! <laughs> didn't but, need to be changed. It was it was hilarious. People love when they see that face. God so ah, whatever. It's like what are they they think they're gonna get sued by Anthem for having them yeah. do that? Anyways, uh, we get Cesaro trying to interfere. Obviously, Jeff Hardy stops it. Matt Hardy wins. Uh, they're on the stage with uh, is it Charlie Caruso. Uh, Matt Hardy chooses the stipulation of a cage match. And cue the Swanton Bomb off the cage tweets. Uh, I saw so many of those, and I saw people complaining that it wasn't a ladder match. But I'll get into that because there's actually news behind that in the headlines of the podcast. See, that's interesting, though. Like, is it going to be a tornado tag where all of them are in yeah, the Yeah, I think it would have to be. Because you can't really sit them on the outside. No. There, of the... there have been matches in the past where that happened. It just looked cluster. I think they're going to do tornado tag style. I hope so because yeah. you can't have a guy stand on the outside of the ring when there's a cage. Yeah, there. it's you're just squished. You're like, oh, tag me in. <laughs> uh, move on. Your boy Tony Neat facing oh, Austin yeah. Aries. Uh, Tony Neat, man, he's niece, but he's neat to us. Call him neat. Uh, man, incredible athlete. He actually, I'll, I'll go with his pro. He's the premier athlete. He's actually incredible. Like his wrestling technique is for a guy that Jack can move that fast. And he's actually, he just looks like he's a good worker, man. He looks like it's some, like, if you're in a 2 5 live division, you want to work at least with Tony Nese for a match to get a good showing. Because he got, he, that's a guy who can put you over 100%. Yeah. I just feel like he's an incredible performer, obviously. But him and Aries, he, put, him and Aries put on a really, really good match. Like, And we didn't get any uh, panning backstage, thank Christ. Neville was at ringside, and he was in, you know, the little ringside chair they have for Raw now. Um, Aries, uh, what do he do? He reversed. Yeah. And it, just with uh, Neville being a ringside, it, it, it's got it's furthering their feud of the submission match they're going to have Extreme Rules yeah. for the uh, Cruiserweight title. So, yeah, good match. Crazy reversal at the end, which led to Aries reversing it to the last chance for you. Aries is an incredible reversal specialist, too. So, it's going to be amazing to see their submission match at Extreme yeah, Rules. Yeah, I think that was just to showcase that Aries is dangerous in a submission yeah, match. And he beats Tony Neat. Uh, yeah. Aries is celebrating on the ramp, and he's staring at Neville and Tony Neat in the ring. And then all of a sudden, Neville attacks Tony Neat. And it applies the rings of Saturn to uh, uh, Tony Nese as Ares is just sitting on the ramp going, yeah, wow, well, good job, dude. good job. <laughs> wow, Neville, you beat up a guy that just got his ass kicked. Yeah, so good. Cool. Tony Nese put out a tweet, by the way. I retweeted it. He goes, why even leave your house and waste a good seat, loser? And he took a picture of this guy on his phone in the front row. Wow. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> During a match. That's terrible. Good good idea, though. I, I agree with Tony Nese tweeted there. that. That was great. Yeah. So we move on. I got Alexa Bliss oh, versus yeah. Mickey James. Man, Raw was long. Uh, quick, decent match. Oh, Mick, I mean, Alexa looks great every but week. But Mickey like looked very, Mickey very looked good. Phenomenal. This and week. not even just attire wise, she looking more cut. Like there were some abs showing on her this week, man. And for Mickey James at her age and to put a, put the work she's putting in right now, good for she's her, doing man. Doing a great job putting yeah. over the younger talent and still yeah. making herself look good too. Yeah, good. I, I Mickey James, man, incredible worker. I hope her her husband eventually comes over, man. Magnus is insane too, so maybe we'll get him over in WWE sometime soon. Um, Alexa Bliss wins with her uh, snap DDT, I think you called it. Yeah, I guess so. Snap it's DDT. It's a finisher. I don't know. Uh, after she goes under the ring, grabs a kendo stick, and just smacks oh. the shit out of Mickey J's man. Loved it. They show the slow motion replay, and her skin just wrinkled 
all the way through her body, man. It was an absolute crazy shot. Out comes Bailey for the save. She gets a hold of the candlestick and then basically scares Alexa Bliss away with it. Uh, Alexa is sh- shown going up the ramp uh, scared. I so loved it. I, it it's cool. smart. It's, they they want to make it as even as possible. If you just make Alexa Bliss smack Bailey every single goddamn week and do the, the cringy underdog shit that we've already seen before, I, just, I won't get behind and it. we got to see Bailey fire up. But it's, that- the way that they're doing this and having both competitors look strong week after week is a, the smartest idea they could ever do with this uh, weird woman's title rematch. It's finally good that they're showing Bailey with some aggression yeah. and not just being the, the happy-go-lucky yeah. little yeah. girl anymore. Yeah. Although I don't think she's going to win the title back. Uh, it's going to be an incredible, well, we'll see how this kendo stick on a pole match plays out at Extreme Rules. Here's your sexual innuendo yeah. for the week. I love when Alexa uh, smashes around that wood, man. She, I but, like when uh, she uses it. Yeah, I love that, uh... I, I love what they're doing, the the, the storyline and but, the, the booking between these two. But why is it a kendo stick on a pole match? Why can't it just be a kendo stick match? WCW why? territory, and Vince Russo booked this. you one. Yeah, uh, on a pole. They're not gonna know. have any under the ring like they usually. Maybe do. they'll have it on like each pole, <laughs> each each side of the ring. Yeah. Oh my god. And you just, they they right they each run up to grab it quickly and just beat the crap out of each other with the kendo sticks. Honestly, I think uh, Bailey needs to have some uh, some <laughs> body armor. No, she needs to have a tutor like Tommy Dreamer or. I see it happen. happening, man. Tommy Dreamer tweeted about Bailey's mark, so I think it's gonna happen. I think they're gonna bring Dreamer back for a raw and have her like have train her, her or something. How to use it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's gonna happen. I think your prediction is actually gonna come so true. Who's gonna help Alexa with her wood then? Ha! <laughs> Sandman. I mean, I, I'll do it for free. <laughs> I think Sandman. If you're gonna do Dreamer, I mean Sandman on the other side. Steve Blackman, man. Yeah. Anyways, anyway. uh, main event time. Finally. Uh, Reigns versus Ro- Reigns and Rollins versus Joe and Wyatt. Good match, good back and forth type of match. There's a lot of showcasing from everyone here, and uh, obviously showcasing their Extreme uh, Rules Fatal Five Way at Extreme Rules. Uh, some point Reigns tries to attack Rollins, but uh, or no, Reigns tries to attack Joe, but Joe gets out of the way and he ends up hitting Rollins instead. And they're getting mad at each other. Reigns gets pulled out to the outside and gets Sister Abigail on the outside by Bray Wyatt, while Joe applies a coquina clutch to Rollins and actually chokes him out. For the win, yeah, Rollins like doesn't out tap, cold. Passes out. So that's smart booking right there. When Reigns hit Rollins with the super yeah. punch, eventually Wyatt and Samojo have this really good stare down in the middle of the ring. I love the way they ended Raw like that. Uh, they had a backstage quickly segment with uh, Finn Balor approaching Craig and saying, "I want to get in on this action, man. Like, I mean, it's a fatal five way match. You're only showing the four oh, people. I like it, but Kurt Angle, man. Yeah." <laughs> Uh, he goes, we'll have a match next week with Finn Baylor. Finn Baylor, yeah, <laughs> Finn Baylor. Like what? What, uh, what did it, Finn Balor said something too in the show? He said Fatal Five Way wrong. He's like a Fatal Five Way or something like that. He said it weird. He's like, oops. Yeah, he's like, oops, Fatal. <laughs> I tweeted about it. I'll have to, I'll have to pull it up. But yeah, Finn Baylor. <laughs> Wonder if Baylor University is going to sue Kurt Angle for Finn that. Finn Baylor. <laughs> Oh Can I call God. him? I'm gonna call him that for now on. Yeah, Finn Baylor. Yep. Oh, uh, we got the the Demon King, Finn Baylor here. <laughs> that makes him sound so weak when they call him Baylor. Oh uh, yeah. Finn. Anyways, but I'm glad that Finn like did that at the end to say like, where, why aren't I in this? Yeah. So that's good. And also again, this fail five way. No one said that after they if, if they would have won this match, they would go on to face uh, Brock Lesnar at Great Balls of Fire. They 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 halt right when they say it's Brock Lesnar. It's like they Lesnar. know it's a promo killer. It, it'll just ruin what yeah. they have to say when they say great balls of fire. Yeah. So Kurt Angle acknowledges it and says, I'll do one better for you, Finn Baylor. And says every week, or not every week, says next week, it'll be Wyatt versus Joe versus Finn Baylor in a triple threat match. Wow. So it's a double main event next week. So we have that. And then uh, Reigns will face Rollins one-on-one. I like that. See, good for Raw for giving us matches for next week. Yeah. And I mean, obviously they're just... Did they shake up in the in the bookers? Did the yeah. bookers for SmackDown go over to Raw? I don't know, but at least they're shaking up these matches for the five people. Like they're not giving us the same match every week with the same yeah. with the same two yeah. people. And now Finn Baylor is actually getting added to this this, this shebang here. I'm glad it's Finn Baylor for getting in, himself yeah. into this. Good for him, man. <laughs> Where's Kalisto? He should be in it. Yeah, Kalisto should be the the guy. It should be a triple threat match between Reigns, Rollins, and Kalisto. And you got Wyatt, Joe, and Baylor on the other side. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be hard to say Finn Baylor a lot. Oh, man. <laughs> so, Raw this week, I didn't mind it. Yeah, it was all right. 
I gave it a six out of ten. I know I only gave it six. I know I gave Raw seven last week. I'm giving it six because it wasn't better than last week. It was just good. It was like on the line or a little bit lower, like I said. So that's why I'm giving it a six out of ten. Maybe six point five will bring it up just a little bit. But it was okay. It was better than SmackDown. But I liked it. There was good. There was some bad booking. There was some good booking. It was good. It was what you expect from a Raw that's like two weeks away from a pay per view. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I, I like the I like the opening segment and I like the ending too. Yeah. The only thing I don't like about the opening segment, I hate when they overproduce and they bring out everybody with their entrances. I wish people would just like come out. Yeah. And just like interrupt them without having their whole fucking entrance and all that and all that jazz. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna give Raw. I didn't really hate that many segments. Honestly, I'm gonna give it a seven this week. Yeah. Like it. Raw. <laughs> I swear to God, since the the brand shakeup, they shook up the creative too. Yeah. <laughs> that's just what I'm saying. They 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 switch the bookers from Raw to SmackDown and SmackDown to Raw. I'm thinking would drop there. I was just okay. It's just a piece of paper. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm giving Raw seven. They, yeah. they it was a good showing okay. this week in my opinion. I, I thought everything kind of made sense. Yeah. Except for the tightest brand thing. <laughs> Other than that, pretty good. Pretty good show. All right. Uh, so SmackDown review. Blue brand from Huntington Center in Toledo, Ohio. Again, she go to Columbus, but whatever. Toledo gets a SmackDown. Uh, on my birthday, so I missed it. Sucks. Anyways, yeah, you, you didn't miss much though. Yeah, we had the, glad you got to get time and a half over so over with the the so celebration for Jinder Mahal, uh, the the Styles and Nakamura teaming up for the first time, and uh, the Money in the Bank participants uh, named they won't, and that's how it opens the show. We get uh, Shane McMahon opening up the show, uh, giving us that saying that Randy Orton has invoked his rematch clause, like we called, and it's going to be at Money in the Bank rematch for WWE title. Great. Another boring match. I mean, I didn't like the one at Backlash. I'm definitely not going to like the one at Money in the Bank because Jinder Mahal already has the title. So what the hell does that match do for me? That match should be the first match at Money in the Bank. Just saying. I hope the Money in the Bank is the main event. Yeah. Uh, Shane announces the five participants for the Money in the Bank ladder match. He announces AJ Styles, Baron Corbin, Sami Zayn, Dolph Ziggler, and then out comes Kevin Owens. But Shane tells it like the production truck to kill the music and says, Kevin Owens, you're not in this, man. And then she's the actual fifth man in Shinsuke Nakamura. So, he, at first it was supposed to be a five man. He's only going to do a five. That would have been even more. I don't know if I agree with five. Anyways, and Kevin Owens gets pissed off. Basically says Shane's jealous because he's the one that beat AJ Styles and Shane couldn't at WrestleMania. Eventually adds Kevin Owens to... Um, as Kevin Owens to the Money in the Bank ladder match, like, so, now oh, okay. so now they're six. All he had to do was say that, and yeah. he gets added to wow. the match. Wow. So you didn't have to even compete for yourself oh in this God. spot. Don't worry, I'll get into that after. Uh, Baron Corbin, try, there's one spot where Corbin like tried to talk, but I guess his mic <laughs> botched, and he grabbed Owens' mic. Yeah, no, he, good, grabbed, he grabbed Shane's mic. Oh, it business. was a good move, it was a good move. Uh, he tells everybody uh, they don't have a chance, and they should just lower the briefcase now and hand it to him. Okay, Corbin, come on, man. Why can you do that? <laughs> you just, I can just let him do that. Uh... Then they each basically like cut a promo on each Owens's other. Owens's was great. Owens was good. He um he basically said that you know he understands why some of these people are in their in the uh, in the Money in the Bank, but then there are some people that lost their matches the other last night yeah. or two nights ago. Yeah. Why are they in it? <laughs> like he says, why why is Styles in the yeah. match? Yeah. Why is Corbin in the match? Yeah. And Dolph Ziggler just kind of stood there awkwardly because they yeah. didn't really talk about him. <laughs> and Dolph Ziggler kind of gets into it. Nakamura introduced himself for those who don't know. I'm pretty sure everyone knows you're Nakamura. Why the hell did they make him do that? And he's like, but to you, Dolph Ziggler, you can call me Mr. Money in the Bank. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that was the end of the segment. And uh, Styles' this part was good where he says, you know, yeah. the, you know, the... the, the, well, the I, I don't know if I can like the, the, the whole... It's getting almost cringe now when we keep, they keep doing that. This is the house that AJ Styles. Can you not say that every goddamn week? It's part of his gimmick. Though. I know, I like but it. like, oh, yes. I like it. Ugh. And it's still him being cocky because he's saying that he's the guy that built it. Yeah. And it, then they had a, a stare down with him and Nakamura at the end of the segment. Yeah. They're, to me, it's just like a baby face thing. Like, I, I don't want to be baby face. It's <laughs> almost like it's getting baby face grounds. So I don't want it to happen. And then Shane books the, the tag team match. Yeah. Uh, Carmella and Natalia. Oh my First, God. Becky Lynch and Charlotte. This was horrid. <sighs> Thank God I didn't watch Raw man, or oh, SmackDown. 
And they showed all three of them, like, doing, like, a little hand thing backstage. I'm like, why? <laughs> why is Charlotte? We got the obvious interference by uh, Ellsworth. But uh, yeah. Becky knocks him down, locks him into the Sarmer for the submission victory. So we get the winner of Becky Lynch and Charlotte. So they get their revenge around the welcoming committee. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> wow. I, I, I'd rather see Charlotte full out heel here and probably, you know, turn on uh, uh, Becky Lynch. But I guess not. Not yet. Not yet. I hope it happens, though. Uh, Sami Zayn versus Baron Corbin. It, pff, literally, it was a 10-second match. I don't know why this was a fucking 10 seconds. What a waste of time. Uh, Sami Zayn rolls him up and wins in 10 seconds. Cool. Really? That, way to bury Baron Corbin. I honestly think the creative people from Raw came over to SmackDown in the shakeup. They would have had this would have never happened before the shakeup. Corbin immediately attacks Sammy after from behind, throwing him from the ring. Uh, he stalked him into the crowd, smacked a steel chair hard across the back before throwing him into the barricade a, a couple of times. Um, Corbin continues his assault all around the arena, throughout the fans, uh, bounding away all away this lifeless Sami Zayn. Eventually, a flock of referees swarm around, and they finally get him separated. But uh, Sami Zayn looked pretty out of it. So that's why all the tweets came in, all the people thinking that Sami Zayn is going to be out of this match in Money in the Bank. I liked it. I liked that Corbin, like, lost it on Zayn. Yeah, after for the 10-second thing. After two tough losses. It would have been cringe if just Zayn ran away, and that was the end of it. Oh, I would have lost my mind this I'm week. I'm glad that Corbin beat him down yeah. afterwards. It just plays up to his character. I liked it a lot. Yeah. Uh, they get a backstage segment. AJ Styles finds Nakamura in the locker room and brings up the history between them. So, okay, okay, we're getting uh, the th- the little, little start of the, the Kindle here. Uh, he says that they've done it all from Osaka to Tokyo, but for the first time ever, they'll be partners tonight. So they've never, ever been tag team partners in anything. Mm. So this is a first. Uh, Nakamura says they are partners tonight, but at Money in the Bank, he will take the house that AJ Styles built and turn it into his playground. Style just playground. <laughs> uh, I like it. So I didn't get to see this, but there's, there was another uh, Fashion Files Toledo edition, and they said it was going to be the last one ever. No, oh. but then they didn't. By the end of it, yeah. was it a good one? Honestly, uh, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> Since uh, I'm reading the, the reports here, Shane McMahon is in his office backstage looking for all this weird stuff. Brazongo has their has on their bulletin board. Breeze notices that Shane has a shaved has shaved his mustache, which he never had. <laughs> they said they need to turn over their badges after losing to the Usos because they're disgraced to oh, the department. Used, and they just started giving them everything. Like they had all <laughs> these different <laughs> accessories on. They just gave them everything. And then like they started to take their pants off, and Shane's like, "Whoa, wait, 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 wait! <laughs> We're gonna book you guys in singles matches against the Usos tonight." Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, we got the in-ring segment, this uh, championship celebration. You know, the, the Punjabi stuff, the dancers and the drummers. I like this. Like, it gets good heat for them, though. Like, I yeah. really liked how they had yeah. all the yeah all the dancers come out, yeah. and they had the red carpet for them, and mm-hmm. the Singh brothers, and it was good. Yeah. You wouldn't like this promo because yeah. you hate the way But he was talks, greeted but... by a chorus of boost, so he's getting that, that, that heat. Uh, Jenner says the fans can shower him with their hatred. But doesn't char- change the fact that 1.3 billion people in the country of India are celebrating him as WWE champion. Mm-hmm. He says the people boo him because he looks different, but they're fools that they've been exposed for not believing in him. Jinder calls himself the greatest champion in WWE history. I don't know about that. He says the fans will not hijack his celebration. Mahal begins speaking in Punjabi, and a small USA chant breaks out. I like that. When he's done speaking, he poses with the title in the corner, and a massive amount of pyro goes up around the arena. Firework. I loved it, man. I thought this was a great way to get him a heat. lot of heat. Heat. Yep. This was literally was all good... about generating heat, and I can get behind that. When was that. the last time we had a good championship celebration for a heel that actually went over well? Remember with Alexis? It was like nothing. Yeah. Like, what is this? What's the point of having a celebration? Well, they're high on Jinder Mahal, so we'll see. He's a good heel champion, so we'll see. I think happens. I think Vince is really behind Jinder. I think he's helping him a lot backstage. Yeah. Obviously, you know, he's got to help him with the diet. I just hope I read reports that they are holding the title till Royal Rumble. I really hope that doesn't happen. I can't take six months of Jinder Mahal being a fucking WWE champion. And Jinder Mahal has a new shirt on the WWE shop. Which I will not buy. Maharaja. Great. I wouldn't buy it if it was a $1 t-shirt. Sorry. <laughs> Jey Uso faced Tyler Breeze. I fell asleep during these matches, by the way. 
Uh, so before the match started, Jay Uso got on the mic and says they don't deserve this match because they lost their chance of backlash. Vendego got in the apron and started uh, squirting him with the water gun he had. <laughs> Jay went after him, then Tyler rolled him up from behind for the quick three counts. So two quick matches in one night on Smack. What is going on? And by the way, how can you get behind a show like this? Especially with their tat. SmackDown has no idea what to do with the tag team division. Speaking of tag teams, your boy's American Alpha. Where? Yeah, I put out the milk carton. It's on our Twitter, guys. If you uh, want to share that, please get the word out there. I'm serious. This is actually uh, a nas- a matter of national security. Uh, where is American Alpha? No one's heard from them. I, I hope they uh, get found soon. Uh, Jimmy Uso faced Vandango. Jimmy attacked Vandango in the corner to take control right away. It's a decent match. Uh... Tyler tries to run to the ring to distract Jimmy, who gets rolled up, just like his brother, for another quick pin. So does this mean Brazongo's getting a title shot at Money in the Bank? Because we haven't seen any of the New Day except on Talking Smack. Right. I, th- I thought the return of New Day was going to happen in the ring. Yeah, I guess we're not going to have uh, New Day at all. So the fashion police grab the mic after and say it looks like the Usos got caught wearing white after Labor Day. And that is a fashion crime. They challenge the champions to put their titles on the line against a couple of real men, and the Usos freak out and tell the referee to make it official, and it's happening. So they have a tag team title match right there on SmackDown. Okay. Uh, the Usos face Tyler Breeze and Brazongo for the titles. Um, from what I can read, it's a decent match. Uh, they hit the top rope leg drop on Jay, but Jimmy took him out of the with the top rope splash and rolled the challenger over for the three. So they were retained. So I don't think this feud's over with. Yeah, either that or then maybe the New Day will finally show up on TV two weeks to backlash next week. Wow. But either way, I really want them to keep Brazongo relevant in the, in the title picture if they're not yeah. winning it. Yeah. Because they're really entertaining right now. Yeah. Uh, Shinsuke Nak. Okay, so we get them made. There was a backstage segment. Shane McMahon is on the phone with someone and says the main event is up next. Natalia comes in and asks for an opportunity at the women's title. Uh, Becky Lynch interrupts and makes her claim for that title as well. Carmella, Antamina, Snuka, and Charlotte and all follow up, make their cases. Shane McMahon announces that next week there'll be a fatal five. Another fatal five? What's up with the fatal five way, man? They're trying to make this a thing? I don't know. but uh, The winner gets go- a championship match at Money I'm in the hoping Bank. it goes with my prediction that it's going to end in a no contest and they're just going to finally decide to make I the honest, women's money in the I bank. I think they're doing the it. I think they're actually doing it because I've been reading reports saying that WWE is high on that. So Please do. It's going to happen. Can Ellsworth be in the match? No, he cannot be in the match. Why not? Because he needs to stay away from TV. Apparently, Becky Lynch has the hots for him. Duh. Anyway, Shinsuke Nakamura and AJ Styles versus Kevin Owens and Dolph Ziggler. Decent match. Good match. I I liked it a lot. Uh, Near the end of the match. They actually really got Nakamura involved in the match, too. Like, he was actually doing a lot of wrestling. You know when you've seen a lot of Nakamura matches where he's literally, like, playing to the crowd and doing a bunch of his... You know, yeah, mannerisms, but he was actually like wrestling in this match. Good, good. I just hope they don't wear him out too much, man. Uh, Styles uh, even even up with a Pele kick at one point to Owens as Nakamura drop kicked Ziggler out of the ring. Nakamura lined up Owens and dropped him with the Kinshasa for the pin and the win. It was pretty brutal looking Sasha, apparently. So um, I guess it's good making knock. You can't make Nakamura lose on his debut no. match. So Smackdown. Styles and Nakamura win for the first time uh, teaming up together. The show ends with Nakamura and Styles face to face under the Money in the Bank briefcase, staring down at each other. So a tease at uh, Nakamura that match and AJ better Styles. Better be fucking safe for Mania. If they yeah. rush that match, if that's SummerSlam, I'm gonna be pissed. I don't know. I might have to actually go all the way to Brooklyn to see that match. <laughs> but it, they finally have a match that is. That everybody wants to see again. They already ruined the, the Taker and Cena one. They have a yeah. match here that that is main event WrestleMania quality, all around, and they better not fuck it up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That was SmackDown. No Dillinger. Pissed off. Really <laughs> didn't pissed off. Even get off. the entrances for the main event. The, all their entrances got jobs Job. in the main event. Yeah. Great. I wonder if they actually came out single by single during the break, or they just came out there while like you know a commercial was playing on the Titan drone. Uh, do you like Owens taking the fall here? Yeah. Uh, I think it should have been Ziggler again. Yeah, I think it probably should have been Ziggler again. That way, Nakamura looks strong over Ziggler once again. But who knows? We'll see. I think it, again, the booking is re- backwards on SmackDown. It, and somehow Raw's getting the good. I swear they shook up the bookers. <laughs> but I don't think it's actually true. I think it just seems that way. I don't know. Anyways. We got the next part of the show, ladies and gentlemen. The reviews are done. We got to got to give SmackDown a rating. Oh, yeah, SmackDown. Uh, okay, I give it a four. 
I'm already doing it. I'm giving it a four. Four. Yeah. Maybe a 3.5, man. Did nothing for me this week. It was bad. And I didn't even watch it. <laughs> I'm giving it a 316. Oh, <laughs> an Austin 316. It was bad. Just says SmackDown was shit. <laughs> I liked the main event, and I liked the opening segment. Yeah. But there was a lot of other things that I didn't like. Yeah. Uh, the, the tag team thing, I fell asleep. Yeah. Didn't look interesting. Yeah. Uh, what else? The women's match was horrific. It was bad. Uh, the Corbin Zane match lasted two seconds. Although I did. There's like two matches, the three, match. almost three matches that lasted literally like thirty seconds. And no Dillinger. No Dillinger. So what? How can I? How can I like SmackDown this week? And wh- where? Where? Oh, where is the man that you have to go through to prove yourself on SmackDown? Yeah, where was Sin Cara this week? Why wasn't he added? Why wasn't Dillinger facing Sin Cara? Why isn't Sin Cara in the Money to Make ladder match, man? I think that's a credible performer right there for that Money to Make briefcase. I'm just saying, like him winning the Money to Make briefcase is more credible than all those guys put together. Man, you can't take yourself seriously in a ladder match until you beat Sin Cara. Yeah, got to beat Sin Cara. God, I can't believe I'm saying that. All right, we'll move on to the next part of the show, and that is our top moments of the week in the sh- segment called the List of Ten. Ten. You know what? You know what happens. What's gonna happen? You just made the list. That's right. Welcome to the list of ten. The part of the show where me or myself, Corp and Corp Cappy do our top moments of the week, and we give it a, a ten rating. And in our you know, not so top moments of the week, we give it a list rating. And that is this: the list of ten. God, I love that theme back, song. Back after a few week hiatus. Yeah. So uh, we got our moments, and uh, I'll start off with me. I'll start off with me. Actually, you know what? We'll do it right. I always start off with Corporate Cappy. So take it away, Corporate Cappy. I want to point out that when that music's playing and when Jericho says, you made the list, he points at me every time for some reason. I don't know why he does it. He <laughs> points at me. Breaks Somebody's breaking kayfabe over here. <laughs> Anyways, so my first list moment is no Rusev. Where is this guy? Yeah. I mean, I know that his Nashville Predators, he's a big Nashville Predators fan, are, pro- are in the finals now. He probably told them, I need another week off now. <laughs> but either way, what was the point of him coming back and having that backstage vignette promo thing where he said, you know, I want I'm coming to SmackDown next week for my title match at Money in the Bank. We've seen nothing, no sign of him anywhere. He yeah. wasn't that at uh, oh God, what if he's the backlash. One re- he wasn't anywhere. What if he's the one to replace Sami Zayn? Oh, no, I want Ty Dillinger. Either way, I really think Rusev, when he comes back, is going to get a good push and I think he's going to excel on SmackDown if used in the proper way. And so for no Rusev, after what he, all the promo that he brought up a couple weeks ago. You know what? You just made the list. Yep. All the promoting that he did saying he was coming back to SmackDown and that Shane McMahon wasn't respecting him and yeah, and no sign of him. Yep. Uh, my first moment is a 10 moment. And that's to Elias Samson and a good showing from uh, his first match on Raw this week. I think he looked good. Guy looks good. And I think he'd be a, actually a credible heel, man. He got a lot of heat in his opening promo with his guitar. I think Elias Samson could be pushed into the mid card for a top heel on the mid card. I'm just saying. I think he's got the gimmick that could definitely get heat. Yeah, right. I think I, I, I'm giving it props to Elias Samson, man. Good for him. I think he's, I, I hope he becomes a credible uh, mid card heel. More drifting though. Yeah, more drifting though. I'd like to see more drifting. And for that, Elias Samson gets a perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Elias Samson. I'm giving a 10 moment to Brizongo this week. Oh. Um, not even just on SmackDown, but in general, the whole weekend itself. Um, I really liked the, the tag team match. It was very entertaining with Ma, uh, Grandma Breeze and yep, Grandma uh, Janitor Breeze. Breeze. <laughs> and I just think that the, the crowd's really starting to appreciate how good these guys are, not just in the ring, but on the mic too. They're very entertaining tag team. And I just want to see them actually get pushed as a credible tag team and not fall into the ascension. Uh, hole. Yeah, thank Christ. Um so for Brazongo finally starting to get somewhat of momentum on SmackDown Live, gets a perfect. Tyler Jones puts break a leg. <laughs> yeah. For Eli Sampson. Poor guy got roasted at the yeah. live event in Nashville. Yeah. Uh, my next moment is a ten moment. And that goes to Heel Goldust. The return of Heel Goldust. I cannot wait to see what they do with Heel Goldust in the future. And then this is again, like you said, if this is his last hurrah, I hope it's a good one. Um, I'm still saying maybe they get Dana Brooke to be the, the woman manager like Terry Runnels was for him back when he debuted. But I'm loving the heel Goldust. Fantastic uh, Shattered Dreams production off the bat for his heel run. I love it, and I can't wait to see what they do with Goldust in the future. So for that, heel Goldust gets a perfect. 
Yes, thank you, Heal Gold does. Oh, you don't miss Golden Truth? No, not at all. <laughs> Your moment now. My next 10 moment goes to the hopeful women's Money in the Bank ladder match. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really hope they do this. Uh, it looks like they're planning for it with the Fatal 5 way next week. Hope it ends in a no contest or all five women laying on top of each other somehow. I don't know how the fuck's that going to work. But I really think that they should do this. We said that they should have done it last year. And especially with the women, the, the SmackDown women brand being stale as bread right now, I think they yep. need something to kind of boost them up a bit because right now it's bad. Yeah. It, it is stale. It is boring. I don't care about any of the women on SmackDown right now. I really think they need something like a Money in the Bank, and it would be the first, you know, we, the first time ever thing. Yeah. <laughs> but, the, but the SmackDown women, th- these girls, they need a sh- they need a chance. Yeah, the Raw women are getting all the all the the publicity right now, and I really think that it would be a really good match. So for the hopeful women's Money in the Bank ladder match, they get a perfect ten. Perfect ten. All right, my next moment is my first list moment. Goes to the Titus brand being unsuccessful this week and pushing the Titus brand. You lost to Kalisto. To Kalisto. And then Titus O'Neil, like, distracted, basically, for Apollo to lose. How do you get this, this, this Titus brand credible by losing to Kalisto? Honestly. That was terrible. They should have had Apollo bury Kalisto. And then Titus O'Neil come in and attack him, too. It's just... I, I they need, If they're making this more credible, man... And if they're playing on a split between Apollo Crews and Titus O'Neil, why? What, what's the point of even doing it then? If you're gonna run with it, you gotta carry it and you gotta build it. This is the improper way of building it. And for that, the Titus brand this week. You know what? You just made the list. Terrible. Made no sense. Why? Why is Apollo Crews still losing? I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm done with it. Moving on. My rant of the week. No, here we go. The, the no blissful moment. qualifying matches for the Money in the Bank ladder match. <laughs> Why do these five guys instantly get put in the match? There's like three weeks in between these shows. Why can't they have somewhat of a challenge for these guys to actually yeah. have a match to qualify? Where's Sin Cara? Anyways. Yeah. Sin Cara should be the should have been the first qualifying match. Not even that. He like, should have been the first out there tonight. <laughs> You could have you could have had booked something for the next two or three weeks. You could yeah. have had filled your shows up with qualifying matches, not just this week. You could do it next week, yeah. and it could be something to look forward to. You just you just give these guys uh, opportunities in the match. It doesn't feel right. I how feel like is, they somewhat have to earn yeah. it. How is this the land of opportunity when you're just being given opportunities? That's like not why, how it works. Why doesn't Ziggler have a match with Dillinger to determine who gets in? Why right? doesn't Corbin have a match with Sta- with, with Sami Zayn. Zayn. You know, the winner gets sense. in, and then maybe Sami Zayn, you know, has to do another match. I don't know? like when people are just thrown in a Royal Rumble or thrown in a Money yeah. in the Bank ladder match. I really think they could do a better job with booking quality television for the weeks leading up to the main event or to the main event of Money in the Bank. And you know, what he could have done. He could have had Randy Orton have a qualifying match, and Jinder Mahal get in, get in, get and cost him, exactly. and cost him the match. So for WWE not taking advantage of this quality booking. <laughs> You know what? Hang on. You just made the list. I bosh just the, the listing there because what Tyler Jones said in the chat. Sin Cara and Kalisto get back together and destroy everyone and win money in the bank. <laughs> Quote it. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. Oh, God. Kalisto and Sin Cara, the stepping stones of WWE. Why? They could have been in qualified. That's what I mean. Like, why are they not yeah. making these Why didn't Apollo Crews? Like, why didn't they boost the ties brand? Oh, I'll get you in that money in the bank match here. You just got to you gotta, you gotta go beat Sami Zayn and have Sami Zayn win that way. Well, I'll you know? have to do a cross-branded thing, but yeah. I just hate how they don't have to earn it anymore. Oh, yeah. Apollo Crews is on Raw. What am I talking about? I just hate how they don't have to. They have the people like Aiden English could have been in a qualifying. Yeah, match. Aiden like, English versus Sami Zayn. We all know who's gonna, probably going to win these matches. Yeah, but at least have the freaking qualifying match. So we, yeah, so we can. So it makes it look better. I don't know. Anyways, uh, my next moment is a ten moment, and that goes to Mickey James for looking so good, man. I mean, I know she already looks good, and to all you Mickey James fan fan uh, fan boys and fan girls out there, she looked extra good this week, and also extra cut. She looks like she's getting more cut. She's got those abs building. Good for Mickey James. Especially at her age, man, I give her all the props, man. And for her to be there and putting the woman over properly. Not just like, you know, you can they're gonna have someone put someone over. Like Dana Brooke can go to put someone over, but then she botches all the time. So, you know, it's not done properly. We got a girl like Mickey James who knows the business from front to back, you know how to put someone over. I'm glad. I lo- I'm loving the whole thing they're doing with Mickey James and uh for her looking so good lately, and then she gets a perfect. Yep. Yep. And uh 
Last 10 moment of the week. Oh, God. It is Don't Hinder Jinder. Oh, yeah. Of course. Unreal week for the Jinder Mahal Maharaja. Maharaja. Unreal week, this guy. Shocking the world at... Oh, yeah. Shocking. Shocking So shocking. backlash. Everybody was shocked that he won. Nobody actually thought that he would actually win the title. The guy's never won a title in his WWE career. Yeah. He finally gets a shot as a top heel. I just don't want him to hold it long. His great celebration on SmackDown oh, so where great. he started talking in Punjab to the to the other uh, audience. Oh I yeah, that was, was my, that was needed. You I know? thought he's I think he's getting great heat as a WWE champion, and for Jinder Mahal and this whole believe in gender movement, it gets a perfect. <laughs> yeah, sure. Jinderella. Jinder. Gin- oh god. Okay, I gotta move on from that. Uh, my last moment needs a list moment. And it pisses me off because it's uh, something near and dear to my heart and our hearts here. No Ty Dillinger on SmackDown this week. Again. Again. He's in a feud. With Unbelievable. That, I hope that's done. I hope he didn't have a dark match against him again. How are they not pushing Dillinger to anything right now? Again, why was he in like a, a qualifying match this week or something, man? I really hope that for some reason out of the blue that he has to replace Sami Zayn, we actually get to see him in something at Money in the Bank. Because right now, he's got nothing for Money in the Bank. He might not even be on the Money in the Bank card. I just don't know what's going on. He might have another rematch against Aiden English. It's just, it's not hard to book him. He's got the gimmick. He's got the crowd behind him. He's got the 10 chance. What the hell is the problem in booking this guy? I don't understand. How is it that hard when you can book a guy like Jinder Mahal who takes a million steroids and has the most boring voice on the planet, but you make him WWE champion? Loved it. Unbelievable. And then for that, Dillinger not being on SmackDown. You know what? You just made the list. Unbelievable. He doesn't make the list. You know what? The SmackDown creators and bookers make the list. Ty should get on Jinder's diet. No. By the way, why doesn't why doesn't he face Sin Cara in a match? Oh God, Ty Dillinger versus James Ellsworth in the pre-show match. I hope not. Why doesn't Dillinger face Sin Cara? Because if he wants to be credible, and yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, he should be facing Sin Cara. I'm pissed off he's not doing that either. That's a stepping stone right there. (laughs) Better than what he's doing now. Yeah, but that was my last moment. Sure. Ah, What a week! What a week! So end off the show, guy, or end off the show. The last segment of the show, and that is the WWE headlines. We're talking about any news and rumors in the WWE. So hit that headline music. That's right. Welcome to WWE. I love that theme. WWE headlines. We're talking about any important news and rumors going on in the WWE. We have some headlines this week. Believe it or not, Corporate Cappy, some headlines. Mm. So, we'll start off with the first bit of news. Canada breaks kayfabe. What? Oh, my God. Jinder Mahal recently won the WWE title and spoke about doing it for India. He also had a Punjabi celebration on SmackDown this week, as we all saw. What you might not know is that Jinder Mahal was actually born and raised in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Yes, he is actually Canadian. A member of Alberta legislature, Graham Sucha... Recently took a moment to recognize the title victory for Jinder Mahal in a recent uh, Alberta House of Commons. He posted the following video, which includes him saying, Don't hinder Jinder on a, on a bill that was brought up. Recognizing Jinder being the first WWE champion from Calgary since Bret Hart 20 years ago. So craziness right there. Uh, bring, man, it just shows how Canadian we are. I just love that, that the Canada legislature. Yeah. For, it said that. Like Jinder Mahal, man. Yeah, but he's Canadian. For you guys that don't know, you guys don't know, he's actually Canadian. How can you not get behind him, man? Yeah, he's Canadian. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. And part of me, there's like a small, there's like a small part of me that does, but then there's the, you know, the know what? How many guys have we gotten behind in the past that have taken steroids? I just, I'm so behind Ty Dillinger. Are you going to be behind Brock Lesnar because he took steroids? No, I think you will be. No, you were behind him in his match against Goldberg. Because Goldberg sucks. Anyways, uh, here we go. This is what news I want to get into as I was uh, speaking about earlier. Plans for Sasha Banks at Extreme Rules. Oh, God. Past few weeks on Monday Night Raw, she was involved in a feud with Alicia Fox, and the two have been trading victories. Sasha was able to pick the victory this week, but it was Fox who was able to get the upper hand alongside her boyfriend, Noam Dar. So what is next for Sasha Banks? According to Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer Radio, 
Sasha at Extreme Rules could be involved in a mixed tag team match. Dirty teased it this week on Raw with Sasha pushing Noam Dar. The this is furthering speculation to believe that. Uh, oh my God, I just missed it here. That Cedric Alexander will be the one added to the match with his previous feud with Noam Dar and Alicia Fox. Makes sense. Yeah, I think it'd be a good tag team match. I'm glad that Sasha's being put with somebody like Cedric Alexander. Good talent. Yeah. So, I mean, as long as it's only a one pay-per-view feud uh, and then Sasha gets right back in the title picture, I'm okay with it. Sure. I'm, I'm okay with it, too. We'll see. Uh, next bit of news. Hint on Jitter Mahal's push length. Beautiful. Jitter became very good champion in Backlash after defeating Randy Orton. Many fans have given their opinions on Jitter winning the title. Some loved it, and others can't stand the decision. One thing is clear, though. It's gotten fans talking. In videos posted after the win, it appears as if Jinder will be working as a heel in the United States, but being portrayed as a babyface in India. Really weird. That's an interesting concept. Jinder cut a heel promo for the Derby's YouTube channel after his title victory. He also cut a much different one for fans in India. Interesting. Uh, something that is very interesting from his message to the Indian fans was that he says he's looking forward to defending his title in India. Hmm. So, I mean, why this is interesting. Derby doesn't actually come to India for any live events until September. That could mean that if Derby is serious about the expansion into India, they're going to keep the title on Jinder until after those events. Makes sense. Would make more sense for Derby to want him to walk into events as champion. Things can change over the next several months, but this could be a hint at where this is where they're going for their long term plans for him as champion. You know what? If that's what they feel that's gonna make them money, then yeah. they're they're gonna do it. Like yeah. I think honestly the ginger's gonna hold on to it for a while. I think yeah. he's gonna be like that dominant anti American heel, which I mean Kevin Owens is already that with the US title. Yeah. Maybe but, they make him lose a maybe if they hold on to Survivor series, maybe Survivor series, who knows? Or maybe he loses it and then wins it back at like an uh, India live event. Can you imagine that if he wow. won the WWE in, title India? in oh, India? Oh, the at, heat. Like, a live event? The heat, man. I mean he, he got heat in India. Pop in yeah. India. Wow. I could see I could definitely see them going that route, like him winning the title back in yeah. India or something, uh, you know? Maybe that way. Yeah, maybe Randy Orton wins it. At a live event at too, SummerSlam, and he wins it back in September. Ooh, that'd be I think that would, that would be huge ratings for them if they did yeah. that. Well, that'd be a good idea. We'll, we'll keep that in mind. You heard it here first, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Uh, next bit of news, and this is coming from Mike Johnson from the Pro Wrestling Insider. And this is about Maria Kanellis and Mike Bennett in their WWE update. Uh, he was on Jim Ross podcast. Jim Ross asked Johnson if Mike Bennett and Maria Kanellis will be on WWE television anytime soon. As far as Johnson knows, both Bennett and Canellis have signed by are been signed by WWE, and they're initially supposed to debut on WWE programming weeks ago. Those plans have changed, but he expects to see both of them debut for for WWE in the next two weeks. So we'll see what happens with uh, Maria Canellis and Mike Bennett. I thought didn't they sign like two months ago? Right, they signed like weeks ago. I think it was only like a month ago they signed, but they never they're supposed so, to debut. I don't know. I don't know why they don't go to NXT. Uh, maybe that means, but this isn't to be like this is not technically it just says WWE, and technically WWE owns NXT, so maybe it is NXT. Can we just say a side thing? I I think NXT really needs a like a mid card belt. Yeah. Like unless that's what they're doing with the the UK Championship. Yeah. I really think even the cruiserweights too. Like they got nothing to fight for. They need besides, a tag team belt. You have yeah. the main title for the cruiserweights, and then yeah. they have nothing else to fight for. They don't have a tag team division. They don't have a mid card division. Yeah. I think they need to add a couple more titles here to have these guys fight for something. Yeah. I, I agree. So in the same interview, uh, Mike, or Mike Johnson also talked about Adam Cole's WWE update. Uh, Johnson thinks the only matter, it's only a matter of time before Adam Cole arrives in WWE as well. He says that Cole has incredible charisma, and if WWE dropped him right now into SmackDown Live or Raw, he could keep up with any he could keep up with anyone. Uh, nonetheless, he'll probably start in NXT. But that's uh, but that's not a hindrance because Cole is an amazing talent who has really grown over the years and will continue to grow. I think it'd be a great addition for NXT yeah. right now. I, but, I mean, a lot of the guys have had to start in NXT anyway. Yeah. Uh, Styles need, is the only yeah. guy that they got to keep building an NXT roster, man. If they're going to look for some next top guys, they and need if to stock, restock yeah. the shelves. They've taken so much talent from that roster over the last two years that they yeah, really need so. to restock the shelves. I think he'll. Be, I think he'll go to NXT. There's no way he goes to the main roster right away. No, no and way. they wouldn't even have a place for him anyway. They wouldn't even put yeah. him in the main, the Money in the Bank. Probably he'd be in the same place as Dillinger. Yeah, he'd be just floating around somewhere. Right. 
Uh, why don't we show again next the next bit news? Why don't we show a cage match instead of a ladder or TLC match for the Hardys at Extreme Rules? Let's get the inside scoop right here. As seen on Monday night's episode of Raw, Matt Hardy defeated Sheamus for the opportunity to pick the stipulation for the upcoming title defense at Extreme Rules. It is revealed that after the match, that Matt Hardy chose that the battle will be inside of a steel cage. Uh, while many were hoping we would see Hardy's face off against Cesaro and Sheamus in a ladder match or a TLC match, that wasn't the plan. Dave Meltzer mentioned in the latest installment of the Wrestling Observer Radio that the company decided a steel cage match because they just had a ladder match at NXT TakeOver Chicago event over the weekend and felt it's too soon to announce another ladder match. I guess it kind of makes sense. Yeah? I mean, give them variety. I think the cage match is a good idea. And they can do some spots in the cage match. It doesn't always have to be a ladder match with these guys. Yeah. Right, the, the, the even, Dudleys oh didn't always yeah. do table matches. They did other matches. You got to do variety, especially yeah. for extreme rules. Like, I'm excited for a cage match. I love that. I, I can't wait to see that. Yeah, I really hope it's tornado tag where they're yeah. all in the ring at the same time. Yeah. Next bit of news. Here you go. WWE planning a women's money in the bank match. Thank God. WWE plans for a women's money in the bank match at this month's pay per view. Pro Wrestling Sheet reports a source that sources have informed them that the company is planning to having the mon- having the match at Money in the Bank and are expected to make the announcement over the next couple of weeks. This will be the first match of its kind. As of this writing, there's no word yet on the participants of the match, but we'll keep you updated, and there obviously is going to be the women that are on it. The- there's only like five women that are doing anything on the roster right now. So. Ellsworth. Yeah, no. But, but yeah, like, they're going to have it. But they deserve it. Why Why wouldn't they be allowed to have one, you know? Right. It, it's about time. Like, it should have happened years ago. Right. I and can't wait for it. Is it going to be pink? Yeah. <laughs> is, is, is the briefcase going to be pink? Yeah. Tyler Jones is Maria's my new favorite. <laughs> and just crew Bailey. <laughs> Maria Canelo. Wow, you're leaving Bailey? I'm not leaving Bailey, man. I'm a hugger for life, man. Cringely, but Hugger no. club. Yeah, she's going to get her uh, her ass beat in that kendo stick match. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Nope, 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 nope. She's going to get beat by five nope. feet of fury. Anyways, that's it for the news, guys. And that's going to wrap it up for the show. So, that will wrap it up for week... It. That's it for week number eight. Of the Lowdown Show Brand War, or not Brand War, it's Lowdown Show on the Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, where your Canadian based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw, Tuesday Night SmackDown from the past week. Also, during the show, as you heard, we have our segment called The List of 10. And there will be headlines where we talk about any important news and rumors in the WWE. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker, available at Spreaker.com slash NGWP or on the Spreaker app. Available for all Android and Apple devices. All you have to do is sign up with an email. It's that simple. After you're done recording, the podcast is posted in full on Spreaker on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash NHBWR. And on iTunes and Stitcher Radio, if you listen to those uh, or listen to us on those platforms, go give us a five-star rating. That will be much appreciated. And you, you can do so by searching up The Lowdown Show. You can follow the podcast on Twitter also at WP. And join in on the conversation by having your thoughts and questions read right here on the show. We're also available on Facebook and Instagram by searching up No Holds Barred WP. All links will be in a description for you below on the YouTube video. I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And every week I'm continuing to be joined by my co-host. He is a blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. The Maharaja. <laughs> the Maharaja, Corporate Cappy. God. And I'm always here reminding you to keep it. On the lowdown. Gonna kick your sorry ass, but what you gonna do?